is Rob with SafeNet IT, and today we're enabling data at rest encryption on a Nutanix cluster. If we click on the cluster name, we'll see the cluster details show that this cluster is currently not encrypted. We already have a key secure setup and a secondary key secure clustered together. If you go under the Device tab and look at Cluster, you can see the details. This shows that we do have clustering configured already on our key secures. We want to make sure on the key secure that we are in FIPS mode, so we'll click on the Security tab and go down to High Security. And here we can see that we do have FIPS mode enabled. That will automatically disable any of these lower security options. If we click on device, we can verify that we do have a KMIP server already configured. This is listening on port 5696. And under Properties, you want to double check that the username field in Client Certificate is set to UID. That's what Nutanix uses for the cert requests. If it's not, just click on Edit, go down to this option, Username Field and Client Certificate, and select UID. Then click Save. Also on the key secure, we'll need to add the local user of Nutanix. So we go to Security, Local Authentication. Click the Add button under Local Users. And give it a username of Nutanix, all lowercase. We'll also need to enter a password here, but this is not used in the cert request and signing. You do not need to enable user administration permission or change password permission for this user. While we're here, we'll go ahead and click on Local CAs and Download to download the Certificate Authority root cert. We'll be uploading that to Nutanix in the next step. we look under the Security tab, under Keys, we see there are currently no keys on the Key Secure. Those will be created once we're done configuration. On Nutanix, we click on Settings, and then Data at Rest Encryption. We can see here on this screen also that Data at Rest Encryption is not set up. So click on Edit Configuration, and we can begin. On the Configuration screen, we'll scroll down to the bottom. We'll be entering the fields from the bottom, working our way up. Under the bottom section, CA Certificates, we'll click on Add a New Certificate Authority. Here we'll give it a name that's used locally. And then we'll click Upload CA Certificate and select the certificate that we downloaded from the Key Secure Certificate Authority. Now we click on Save, and that stores that root cert. The next section up, we want to click on Add a new Key Management Server. Here again, we'll give it a name used locally. We'll enter the IP address. I'll click over here and take a look at the key secure and make sure I have this correct. The port we're using is 5696. Since we have a cluster configured, we'll use the Add Address button to add the additional members of the cluster on this screen, since they're part of the same key secure cluster. The other member of the cluster is also using port 5696. OK, 
Okay, now that we have the key management servers configured, we'll go to the very top section, Certificate Signing Request Information. These are the fields that will be populated in the certificate request generated by each node. Email, organization, organizational unit, country code, city, and state. When we have those fields filled in, we'll click on Save CSR Info. And then we click on Download CSRs. On the screen, we can see the list of nodes. And we can download individual cert requests or click on one button to download all the CSRs in one zip file. If we extract the zip file, we'll see that we have four cert requests, one for each node. Now we'll need to get each of these cert requests signed on the key secure. Back on the key secure, we'll click on the Security tab, Local CAs, and then the Sign Request button. On the screen, we want to make sure to select Client for the certificate purpose, because each of these nodes will be a client. We paste the text from the cert request text file. And then click Download. That'll let us save the signed certificate. Since we have four nodes, we have four cert requests, and we need to get each one of those signed. OK, now that all of those are signed, on Nutanix, we'll click Back. Under Key Management Server, we'll click on Manage Certificates, and then we select Upload Files. Here's where we'll select each of those signed files from the KeySecure. Then we click on Submit, and we can see each of the files has been uploaded. The next step is to click on Test All Nodes. As you can see, all of the nodes now are verified. OK, now that we have all the sections on the screen configured, we can scroll down to the bottom and click on Enable Encryption. Just a reminder that this is not a reversible operation. Once encryption is enabled, you will not be able to disable encryption. That's why there's a secondary prompt here. In order to enable encryption, you will need to type in encrypt in all uppercase and then click the encrypt button. And success. The cluster is now encrypted. If we look at the key secure now under the security tab, under keys, we see four keys, one for each node. We can also see those have been replicated to the additional member of the cluster. Under our main key secure, under device, log viewer, activity, we can see information here showing that the nodes have each communicated with the key secure and created the keys that they need. And this completes configuration of data at rest encryption on a Nutanix cluster.